In Google Analytics 4, there are several types of events, like automatically tracked events, recommended events, and then there are custom events. In this video, I will focus on custom events, when should you use them, and how to configure them. Google Analytics has a documentation of recommended events. Below the video, you'll find a link to this page, and here you will find a list of events that Google recommends you to send to Google Analytics 4, depending on your business. In many cases, recommended does not mean required, for example, if you want to send a form submission, you can use the generate lead event or you can name it anything else. However, if you want to implement e-commerce tracking, then your event names must exactly follow the naming convention, such as purchase or add to cart and so on. But what if you want to track an event that is not mentioned anywhere in this documentation? In that case, you can send custom events. By the way, a quick note is that in this video, I will be using Google Tag Manager. So if you're looking for information how to track events without Google Tag Manager, which means that you want to use G Tag or Google Tag, then I will post a link to another tutorial below this video. All right, and now let's take a look how can we track custom events with Google Tag Manager. Here I have a demo website, and let's say that I want to track when this particular image appears on the screen. If I look at the list of recommended events, there is an ad impression event or view promotion, but let's say none of these events apply to my situation. So I will need to send a custom event. The first step would be to create a trigger in Google Tag Manager when this element stays on a screen, let's say for two seconds. To do that, first we would need to do the right click and then I click inspect. And here I will see that this image has an ID which is called very important image. So this information might be useful in Google Tag Manager. Let's go to Google Tag Manager, Triggers, then New, Trigger Configuration. And since I want to track the appearance of the element, I will select the Element Visibility Trigger. Here I have two options how to select a particular element. The basic one is the ID and a more advanced one is CSS Selector. In this video, I will be using the simple one because my element has the ID. Then in this field, I have to enter the actual name of the ID. So in this case, it will be very important image. And let's say that I want to track this when it appears on the screen once per page. So if the visitor keeps scrolling up and down, let's say like this, and then sees the element again, I just want to track that once per page. Then I want to make sure that the element is fully visible. And let's say that I want to track the appearance only when it stays for at least two seconds, or in other words, 2000 milliseconds. And then let's name this trigger. Then click Save. And let's see if this trigger works. Click Preview. And then I will enter the URL of the page where I have that very important image. So I copy the URL, I paste it right here in the preview mode and click Connect. By the way, in this tutorial, I assume that you already are familiar, at least with the basics of Google Tag Manager. If you have no idea what GTM is, then I will post a link to a tutorial below this video. Click Connect. Now I will scroll down and I will wait for two seconds when this element is visible on the screen. And then in the preview mode, I see the element visibility event. So this was dispatched by my trigger that I just created. So this looks fine. Also, just to save some time, I will want to enable click related variables because even though it's not very intuitive, if the element appears on the screen and it has an ID, you can fetch that ID with a variable called click ID. So go to variables in Google Tag Manager, then configure, and then enable all click related variables. Then I will close it. We'll click the preview to refresh the preview mode. And then I will scroll down again, wait for two seconds. And then here, if I click element visibility and go to variables, I will see that click ID fetched the ID of the element. So this is correct. Now let's send a custom event to Google Analytics 4. Let's go to tags. In this video, I assume that you have already installed the Google tag in your GTM container, which means that GA4 in general is installed. If you haven't done that yet and you don't know how to install GA4 with Google Tag Manager, I will post a link to a tutorial below this video. So now I will click New, Tag Configuration, Google Analytics, and GA4 Event. Here we have to enter the measurement ID of our Google Analytics 4 property. You can find it by going to Analytics, then Admin, then 
data streams, web data stream, and copy the measurement ID. You can either paste it like this, or you can create a variable that will contain this ID because in the future you might have more GA4 event tags. So it's a good practice to just reuse the variable instead of copy pasting the ID manually over and over again. So instead of this measurement ID, let's cut it, then click the button to insert the variable and let's click plus to create a new variable. Here, click variable configuration and select constant. Here you can enter the measurement ID and then you can name this, let's say, G4 measurement ID, like that. Click Save. So you need to do this action only once and then in the future, if you create more G4 event tags, you just can reuse this variable in those tags. And now the event name. That's where the concept of custom event names becomes reality because here we have to come up with some event name. We don't have any specific events in the list of recommended events. That's why I will just come up with my own. For example, element appeared. Then we can send some additional parameters because maybe you're tracking appearances of multiple elements on a page. So you need to somehow distinguish them. In this case, we have the ID of the element, so we could kind of send it together. Let's go to Google Tag Manager, event parameters, and then add a parameter, which could be called, let's say element. ID like that. And here we can insert the variable, which is click ID, because it gets the ID not only of a clicked element, but also of that element that appeared on the screen. Then go to triggering and select the visibility trigger. Then I will name this tag and click save. Now I will test if this is working properly. I will click preview to refresh the preview mode and fetch the latest changes of my container. Then I go to the page, I scroll down and wait for two seconds until my event tag is fired. And here is the event, and this is Google Tag Manager event. But if I click here, I will see that my Google Analytics 4 event tag fired. Sometimes this kind of bug appears, even though in reality it should be GA4 event tag, but I think that eventually Google will fix this. But right now this is not a problem. So my tag has fired, now let's check if that event was received by Google Analytics 4. Let's go to GE4, then admin, and then debug view. And here I see some events. One of them is element appeared. I can click it. And here, one of the parameters is element ID, the one that I sent as a custom parameter. So that's the general concept of how to send custom events to Google Analytics 4. After 24 hours, this event will appear in your events report. The location of that report might differ depending on what you have on the left sidebar, but here's one of the places where you can find it. So go to reports, then examine user behavior and events. In other properties, it might be engagement and then events, or basically you just need to browse the entire sidebar and find a report that mentions events. So here, after 24 hours, you will start seeing your custom event right here. You don't have to register the name of the event because all events in GE4 will be displayed right here. But since we are sending a custom parameter, which is element ID together with the event, that should be registered in Google Analytics 4 because it's a custom parameter. And to see that in the reports, you need to register a custom dimension. So let's do that. I will go to Google Analytics, admin, then custom definitions, create custom dimension. And here we can enter, let's say element ID, the scope must be event because this particular parameter applies to this event. And if there are multiple elements, then on each event, the value of the element ID might be different. That's why the scope is event. And here in the event parameter field, we must enter the element ID parameter, which is exactly like this. So if you name it something else like element name or whatever, then this exact text must be inserted right here. So in my case, that was element ID. That's why I will copy it and I will paste it right here and click save. So once you do this, and then you go to Google Tag Manager and publish your changes by clicking submit and then completing all the steps. After 24 hours, you will start seeing your custom event in the reports. And also you will be able to use that element ID custom dimension.
And that's how you can track custom events with Google Analytics 4 and Google Tag Manager. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or GA4, then consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.